five, four, three, two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with another exciting episode of a Shaggy Life podcast. Sorry, it's been a while since I've gotten a episode on. Just always looking for those ideas that uh, you guys would be interested in listening to. If you guys are listening to the podcast on one of your favorite podcasting apps. Don't forget you can go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker and you can see me waving at you and you can watch the podcast on the YouTube channel. And if you're watching me on the YouTube channel right now, thank you. Good to see you. You guys don't forget you can listen to the podcast on any of your favorite podcasting apps. If you guys are out walking in the morning or driving in your car or something like that. Don't forget to subscribe to both the podcast and the YouTube channel. Uh, trying to get my subscribers up on the YouTube channel, so I would appreciate any uh, subscribers there. And uh, don't forget that I have launched the new t-shirt store, artoruni.com. You guys go there and I will have an episode uh, kind of describing where all that came from and talking about the store. So look for that episode coming up. But um, I've got uh, some t-shirt designs there for the 70s Buzz podcast and Enid and Art Rooney and just, uh, just trying to add some more retro mid-century modern pop art, uh, those type of designs. So I will get more of those on there as time goes by. But at least go check out the store again it's art o rooney r o o n i e art o rooney kind of like um cool o rooney back in the 70s but it's art o rooney.com check it out let me know what you think if you have some ideas for some t-shirts there's also going to be a lot more sweatshirts and stuff like that on there so anyway check it out let me know what you think and uh, tonight's episode uh, if you could tell by the title is all about uh, kind of our interviews with the members of KISS. And so as of today, fortunately for Todd and I, we have interviewed the both co-founders of the rock group KISS. And I'm going to kind of tell you how that came about and then also play uh, both interviews in this podcast. Uh, Gene's, his is not going to be real clear. Uh, I can't even remember what equipment we used, but that was uh, seven years ago, and so things have improved greatly, and the audio for Paul Stanley is a lot better, and I, we just did that, actually, that interview this weekend, and so that's why I'm throwing this podcast episode together. So, um, again, I apologize for the sound quality that will be on Gene's uh interview. But uh, so growing up in the 70s, KISS was probably the ultimate 70s rock band. I mean, not only were they uh, hard, you know, not super hard rock, but they were hard rock, uh, a hard rock band, but they had the makeup and they had the costumes and they had the attitude and the merchandising and all that. So uh, it was a you know a band that a lot of us listened to in the 70s. They had a lot of albums out in the 70s, and one of my greatest memories of the 1970s was uh, you know 1977, 1978 was jumping on Staten's trampoline in the backyard, and his bedroom was upstairs, and it overlooked the backyard, and so Staten would go up there and he would open his window. And of course, at that time, all we had was uh, turntables. And so he would put Kiss Alive 2 from 1977 on his turntable because it was a double album. And that way we could listen to at least, you know, two albums in a row. And then he'd run up and flip them. But while we were playing dodgeball and just goofing around on the trampoline, we would be listening to Kiss Alive 2. And so I've got a lot of great memories of all of those songs off of that album. And, uh, you know, then when we put our band together, we were kind of more of a, oh, kind of a Kansas, um, REO Speedwagon, you know, type of band. I don't know that we would have ever even, I think we, we easily could have played Kiss songs, but it would have been weird for us, you know, high school guys in jeans uh, performing Kiss songs. So we never attempted to do any of the Kiss songs in 
uh, while we were doing our garage band back in the day, but really did enjoy Kiss. And that was Todd's first concert. Todd and Mark Mankin got to go see them down in Oklahoma City. And I never have seen Kiss in concert. Um, I don't think they ever, not that I remember, they never really came uh, in this area when I was kind of going to concerts. And so I have never seen them, but I um, always thought it would be cool to have seen them back. You know, I think I would have preferred to have seen them in the 70s, uh, not so much uh, 80s or past that. So, but um, really cool band and just, you know, idols of ours and, and bigger than life. And then you see, uh, you know, they take off the makeup and they're still huge. And then Gene Simmons has the reality show and Gene's everywhere and they're still merchandising and marketing and, um, you know, super well-known celebrities. And so the fact, you know, the thought of ever getting to meet them uh, never even entered our minds or the fact that we might actually one day get to interview them um, just was something that we just never, never even contemplated. So, but, you know, fast forward to uh, seven, uh, maybe eight years ago, um, you know, I started Enid Buzz uh, and have become, you know, over the last probably 10 years, probably one of the main sources of news and information here in Enid, Oklahoma, uh, strictly online, digital uh, media, digital information. And so when a lot of events are happening, uh, either around Enid or even, you know, like in Tulsa or Bremen or Oklahoma City, uh, a lot of times I'll get emails inviting me to uh, different things. And then I try to get my name on list to be contacted if there are, uh, you know, press conferences or things like that. And so, so the first thing, you know, the thing that kicked it all off was when Garth Brooks relaunched his uh, concert tour after having kind of retired for a while. And he had a press conference over in Tulsa. And that was really the first big one that <clears throat> Todd and I uh, went to. So I got an email saying, uh, you know, you're invited to Garth Brooks press conference. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So uh, I said, OK, you know, I'll be there. And then I got another email that said, you know, if you would like to interview Garth, uh, depending on how many people were there, we can't guarantee you an interview. But if you would like to let us know. And I said, heck yeah. And so I said, hey, Todd, you know, we got to go over to uh, Tulsa and interview Garth Brooks. And so that was our first big interview. But that kind of led to this thought of, hey, um, you know, if we can go over to Tulsa and interview Garth Brooks, we can pretty much go anywhere and interview anybody else. And so uh, in 2017, uh, in Oklahoma, the casinos are really kicking off and they're uh, really going. And there's a lot of them down south and, and near Tulsa and near Oklahoma City. And so somebody got the idea, the Kaw uh, Indian tribe up by Ponca City, got the idea to put in a casino in Bremen, Oklahoma, which Bremen is right on I-35, just over the Kansas border. And so what you do there is you catch the people leaving Oklahoma, and then you catch all of the people in Kansas and Wichita coming down uh, through Kansas. And so they decided to uh, put a casino in Bremen, Oklahoma. And I don't, I can't remember exactly the story of how they got connected with Rock and Brews, but um, there was a gentleman that created Rock and Brews, and then he teamed up with uh, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. Just those two, not, not Kiss, not the band, um, not you know, not the brand of KISS, but basically just Gene and Paul. And so Gene and Paul became partners in Rock and Brews. And so they started, uh, you know, putting together these Rock and Brews all over the country. And I think as of today, they're up to like 25 uh, Rock and Brews, but they decided to go in cahoots with the Caw Tribe up in Bremen. And so they were going to brand the casino in Bremen, the Rock and Brews uh, restaurant and casino. And so 
they wanted to make that big announcement up there, and all they had was a large tent at the time, and they might have had like a little. I don't. I don't even think they had a little casino. I think they just had a tent, and then the idea. And so I got an email inviting us uh, to come up to the press conference and and uh, hang out and all that. So I called Todd again, said, "Hey, let's go to Bremen." and uh, video Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley's press conference. And so we drove up there. Bremen's about an hour uh, north of Enid, like I say, right before you get to the Kansas border. Uh, Really not a whole lot else in Bremen. It's just really not much there. Basically, uh, Ponca City is where everything happens, but Bremen is right there on I-35. So you don't, you literally don't have to get, you know, it's like an exit. You just get off the exit and you're in Bremen. And so we went up there and uh, Paul and Gene did their press conference and videoed that and all that and got lots of pictures. And then they had, and there was a lot of media there. There was a lot more media there than this last weekend, but a lot of media, a lot of people wanting to do interviews. So towards the end of the event, they said, you know, if you want to do an interview, you know, get in this line. And so uh, all the people got in a line and they would go up on the stage and they were doing uh, interviews with some people were interviewing Gene and some people were interviewing Paul. And I hadn't really thought about uh, doing the interview. Um, so I didn't really have any questions, didn't really think about it. And then as the line kind of started getting shorter, I looked at Todd and I said, hey, let's, let's go get uh, an interview with Gene. And so we basically went up on stage and they they had just kind of cut it off and they said, okay, you know, interviews are over. And and we had just gotten up there and the, I think there was a gal up there and she said, okay, you, you guys can go up there and, you know, ask one question. And so uh, Todd and I got up there, Todd holding the camera and I stuck her microphone in Gene's face and I can't, we don't have it on the interview but I must have asked him something about, you know, what's um, Rock and Brews going to do for, you know, this part of Oklahoma or something. And so this is the interview with Gene. And again, I apologize for the sound quality. I can't remember what equipment we were using. But again, it was seven years ago. Um, the equipment was a lot gnarlier back then and not as reliable. So anyway, here is the interview uh, from 2017 with Gene. Rock and Blues is, is a philosophy, not just great food, gluten-free beers and craft beers and all the other things, but people treating people in a special way. And most important, above and beyond all that, the ability to enhance the quality of the lifestyle of everybody, create jobs, be good community partners, make sure your children don't have to rely on dad for his inheritance to feed their families. This is good for everybody. And when we met our nation members, our CEO and everybody, we just connected as people first. First you connect as people. Great business has to do with great people wanting to be with each other. Then the business takes care of itself. So it started with people, and it should. It will always begin and end with people. Great. Well, we appreciate it. We welcome you guys to Oklahoma. I know you guys have a rock and bruise down in Oklahoma City, and uh, you know we're from this northwest area, so we just love you guys being here. So welcome to Northwest Oklahoma. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you for coming. Okay, that was the uh, interview with Gene. Now, as soon as we got done interviewing Gene, uh, again, like I said, when we'd gotten up there, they said that was the end of the interview. So by that time, Paul had kind of left the stage. And so we did not get a chance to uh, ask Paul any questions, but Gene had kind of been running the whole thing. You know, he was doing the most talking, and of course, he's got the bigger, louder personality. And so I don't know, you know, how many questions Paul wanted to answer anyway. So uh, I did get lots of photos of Paul and um, all that. And so. 
Uh, we loaded up, cruised back to Enid, uh, put together all of that footage. It is on Curtis Tucker, on the Curtis Tucker uh, YouTube page. It's in the Buzzhead radio interview section. But if you go in there, the the entire um, event video is there, which is kind of their press conference, and it's got a lot more footage than what you just heard. And so, um, but after that, I kind of always regretted not going up there sooner and getting that interview with Paul, uh, just because, you know, I think it would have been cool to have gotten an interview with both of them. But so all these years later, uh, we come to, I don't know, probably three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I get another email from the, uh, well, it was actually just from a promotions or marketing gal. And she said, Hey, they are, they have added a new slot room to the Brayman casino. And so by this time, the casino has been built the brand new casino and they've added a rock and brews restaurant. And so that's been running, I think full time for two years. And I have not I had not been up there to Bremen in two years. Now we would drive by going to, you know, places up in Kansas. And I think when they originally announced that they had talked about a big hotel. Well, they never, there's no hotel there. So when you drive by, it's very unimpressive because it's not that large. And so I get this email that says they have added a new room to the casino with more slot machines. And they're calling it the rock and roller slot room and they're kind of going to make it rock themed. And so they are, they were going to have Gene and Paul there again for the ribbon cutting and something happened. And I, I did not get contacted um, for that one, but I think I did not get contacted because it got canceled for some reason, something happened and I can't remember. So they had to reschedule. And when they did the rescheduling date, Gene already had a prior commitment. So Gene could not make the ribbon cutting, but Paul was going to be there. And so I got an email saying that they were going to do the ribbon cutting yesterday, which was Sunday. And uh, Paul was going to be there and I was invited to come up 30 minutes prior to the press conference and do an interview. And so, uh, again, I called Todd. I said, hey, let's go up to Bremen and let's interview Paul Stanley. He was like, cool. So, uh, so this last weekend, I ended up in Norman for the OU football game and then got up early Sunday morning and drove from Norman all the way up to Bremen um, <clears throat> pretty good timing. Todd and I got there about the same time. We were a little bit early. And so, uh, this time we had a lot better equipment. And so we went in and nobody seemed to know anything about what was going on. I mean, they knew that Paul was coming, but they didn't know where the press was supposed to be or where VIP people were supposed to be. So, um, of course, every time we go up there, now this time we didn't get t-shirts, they didn't have t-shirts, but um, we got the cool uh, Rock and Brews, Rock and Brews Casino, I guess I've been calling it Rock and Brews, but it's the Rock and Brews uh, Press Pass, so we got those, we got to go into the Rock and Brews restaurant, which was pretty cool, and so come to find out, you know, it's kind of hard rockish, but they don't really have as much like memorabilia. Like they don't have like a whole bunch of famous people's guitars and instruments and clothes, but they have a lot of art and a lot of pictures of photo albums and posters and logos and things like that. And then art just, and a lot of art. And it's not really, it's not kiss themed. It's rock and roll themed. It's, it's, it's really cool. And what they're trying. So basically they, that what we were told is there's a guy in LA that supplies all of the rock and brews with the memorabilia and the art and the rock and roll stuff for every restaurant. And according to him, 
the restaurant in Bremen, Oklahoma has everything in his catalog. So if you, you know, if you, and, and it's not really, I don't know how it compares size wise to all the rest of them. It's not a huge restaurant, but um, if you want to see everything that is in a rock and brews restaurant, yeah, you can go to the one in Bremen and you're pretty much going to see everything as of today that's available and so uh really cool uh you know like i say posters and pictures and uh some guy had come from la and you know kind of graffiti spray painted Jimi hendrix on the wall and it looked uh, it looked fabulous and then there was some you know guitars that were grouped together i don't think they were really famous guitars i think they were just guitars um, that made some art on the walls. And then they had this cool, what they called a throne of guitars in the new slot room. And it had, you know, one of all of the most famous, like a Les Paul and Fender Stratocaster and all that. And then um, while Paul was there, Paul did go around the entire facility, the casino and the restaurant, and everywhere that he saw a there are there are some murals and things of Kiss on the walls, and everywhere there was a picture of Paul, he he would go up and sign it, and um, and then even signed a few of the guitars that were in the displays, and then as part of the deal to try to get people to come over, and they did have a press conference. Um, outside and there was a you know a decent crowd for for Bremen but they they were giving away ten dollars worth of dollars to gamble with and then I think you had to spend twenty five dollars to be entered into the drawing for a Paul Stanley Ibanez guitar which he signed while he was there and uh, Todd and I took off you had to be there at 3 p.m. And like I say, spend twenty five dollars uh, gambling, and um, I had to get home, and you know, didn't figure my chances would be super good. So we did not stay. I don't know who won the guitar, but um, anyway. So so as far as the interview with Paul, um, they told us to be there at eleven thirty, and they would do interviews from eleven thirty to noon, and so we got there at eleven kind of sat around, goofed around, and then at 11.30, they, um, you know, said, okay, you know, we're going to, and we're going to do this in order, and Enid Buzz, you guys are first, and I was like, oh, cool, and so, but come to find out, there was really, I think there was only three groups there to interview Paul, and then an, another fourth lady, which I think she just was going to, she just did a you know, asked him questions and wrote them on a notepad, I think for probably a newspaper. The other three of us, um, we videoed our interview. One guy just uh, audio recorded the interview. And then I think one other, um, they may have done a video as well. So only two people videoed. But um, so Todd was on video. So anyway, uh, what happened was he was like 15, almost 20 minutes late um, and they had told everybody outside that that press conference was going to be at noon. So then they uh, told us we would only get three minutes to interview him, which, you know, I figured we weren't going to get too long. But with as few of people as there were, had they started at 1130, I think we could have got quite a bit more. So I had all these questions that I had in my head on different subjects that I was going to ask him. And there was no way I was getting all of those questions in, in three minutes. And so, uh, we kind of stood around and they said, you know, if you guys want to get ready, you know, be ready when he gets here. So Todd and I set everything up and we were up there. And, uh, so finally Paul showed up with his entourage and basically just walked right up to the uh, background thing they had set up. And uh, I went right into the interview. And, uh, you know, like I say, Todd videoed everything. So got a good, uh, I think I took it to the max. I think I took it to the three-minute mark, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so this 
is the interview with Paul Stanley that we did yesterday. He's a handshake, not a fist bumper. Oh, turn it on. Go ahead. It's on. Oh, cool. Cool. Here comes Paul. Enid Buzz. I love it. How are you? Good. How are you? Very good. Are you Cassidy? I am not. No. <laughs> I don't know. I guess there is no I'm, I'm, I'm Curtis I'm Tucker. Nice to, nice to meet you. Curtis Tucker. Nice to meet you. And of course, Mr. Paul Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This so is my we'll, buddy Todd Wheeler right here. Hey, nice sir. Nice to meet you. Yep. So, so we'll just set the guys up in front. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So we have about three minutes, guys. We'll just tap you as soon as. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. We were here when you were the, here the first time. Yes. So uh, tell us a little bit about how things have progressed out here and kind of the expansion and what's different now that, than when you were here before. Well, you know, expansion is uh, the result of success. So for us to add 2,300 square feet and 80 uh, class two um, machines. So we're, we're doing the rock and roller slot room. And uh, we couldn't have done that without the all the local people and everybody coming in uh, off of 35 coming in here and making this the spot. Um, it's, uh, it's something very special for us because anytime that we can come into a, an area and make a rock and bruise your rock and bruise, that's what makes it work. Yeah, so, so tell everybody what, like, what rock influences or what, what rock and roll are they going to see in the new rock and roller slot room? Oh, there's all kinds of, there's great machines in there. I don't want to give it away, but uh, when you've got 80 machines, you've got a whole lot of variety. And, you know, again, the, the casino is just uh, state of the art. And what we've done in here is, is uh, pretty special. If you haven't been here, we're waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Yeah, I mean, the art on the walls is beautiful, all the posters, all everything in here is great. So, so music-wise, real quick, yeah. uh, any solo things coming up? Nothing right now. You know, uh, I spent uh, close to 50 years doing, doing that, so I'm taking a little break and okay. traveling and doing things. And, uh, but yeah, for sure, you know, music's in my blood, rock and roll's in my blood, rock and bruise is in my blood. Well, I saw you had bought a new guitar, and yeah. you posted that on Twitter. Yes. So, and you said that kind of got the juices going totally. a little bit. Yeah. I, Just I, anything new with Soul Station? Any anything um, coming up with that? Going going to do some shows. Um, that's that's long overdue, and it's uh, another part of who I am. You know, so yeah. um, playing with a 15-piece band and having horns and uh, other singers. You know, all that stuff. That's some great music. You know, yeah. uh, I I think that. Uh, there's so much great music, and um, it all falls into the rock category. But you've got Motown, you've got Philly Soul, you've got, you know, a lot of uh, contemporary artists, and all of that, uh, in some way or another, is tied to rock and roll. Yeah. Real quick, uh, I follow you, uh, your art. Yes. I love love seeing your new paintings and stuff. Mm. Any any one thing in particular that inspires your paintings when just, you're doing those? Just freedom. You know, um, some people want to create a certain style. I want to create an approach, and the approach is to do whatever I want. That's what life should be about. No boundaries, no preconceived ideas of limitations. And uh, if you had told me, you know, 40, 50 years ago, um, I'd be here at Rock and Bruce <laughs> instead of on stage, uh, I'd say, you're pretty crazy, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Paul. Get hey, out pleasure. of here. Nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you. Hello, sir. Thanks so much. So that was Paul, a uh, really great, friendly guy, um, great answers. I wish I could have asked him more questions. I did have a couple of questions about the 70s. I was going to ask him, out of all of the concerts that they did in the 70s, which concert stood out, you know, the most for him? You know, not necessarily what was the biggest or the loudest or, you know, just which concert just maybe felt the best or did they, did he think they did the best? But anyway, I didn't get to ask him that. I was going to ask him 
you know, what were some of his uh, best memories of the 70s. So um, as you heard, I, I did get to, uh, I had to ask him a couple questions about the casino because that's why I was there. Um, I did get the question in about Solo and uh, Soul Station. And then I wanted to ask him and I'd kind of, I felt like I was running out of time. And so there's a cut in there where I was about to end the interview and looked at Todd and he was whispering something to me and I kept staring at him and he, he was going, art, art. Art. And I was like, and then that's when I asked him the question about the art. So uh, that probably put me over time, but uh, I'm glad I asked it because, uh, you know, just trying to get more information out of him. Um, he just, he seems like a more reserved, uh, quieter guy than Gene. You know, Gene was, you know, uh, just kind of boisterous and louder and, um, but anyway, so we have now interviewed the both co-founders of the rock group KISS, and that's probably as good as we're going to get, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, fun time. So what I'm going to try to do is I do follow Paul on Twitter, and he seems to uh, communicate with people a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the fact that we interviewed him uh, there in Bremen and want, and ask if he will do a phone interview for the 70s Buzz podcast. You guys uh, be looking for that. I'll let everybody know if we get him on. And then that way we can ask him a lot more questions about, you know, some of his favorite 70s albums that they did. Maybe who did Kiss like to listen to back in the 70s? And, and then I'll get some questions from, uh, you know, the 70s Buzz crew as well. So... Fun stuff. It was a, a great interview. Um, just like Jeans, uh, always fun to get to interview your 70s idols. Um, and so that is that. Don't forget, uh, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcasting apps. And if you guys are listening on your favorite podcasting app. Don't forget to uh, sometime go over to YouTube, check out the videos, and you'll want to go over and check out this. I did post just the, I think it ended up being about five minutes exactly. So the five minute uh, interview video wise is on YouTube just by itself, but then it's also mixed in with this episode. So um, go check out what uh, Paul looks like these days. And um, I think he's 73. So, you know, all of us are getting older, but uh, Paul looked great. Uh, I think he rides his bike. He had on his Nike sneakers. Um, did, did a great job on the interview. And so, you guys check it out, and I will talk to you soon. See ya! See ya!